Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the second lecture of week six. And uh, in the last lecture, we had completed the uh, chapter number nineteen, that was the bulk deformation process. So uh, in this lecture, we are going to start the second type of metal forming process, that was a sheet metal working, as we have discussed in chapter number eighteen. So uh, we will start with some brief introduction we'll have a revision what we have discussed in chapter 18 if you remember the fundamentals of metal forming we discuss uh, basics of bulk deformation the sheet metal so we'll start with the uh, brief revision of the sheet metal from that chapter so what the sheet metal is uh, as you know the difference between the bulk material and the sheet metal we had discussed uh, in that chapter then in chapter number 19 again so the material which has lower surface area to volume ratio right the material which has lower surface area to volume ratio that is classified as a bulk and in the same volume if that material has a greater surface area to volume ratio it will be classified as a sheet metal there are some other uh, basis of classification as well but the uh, fundamental is that in the sheet metal we have the larger surface area for the same volume while in the case of the bulk material we have the smaller surface area so uh, the sheet metal they are metal forming and the cutting operations mostly performed on sheets coils and strips which are obviously derivative of the sheets the coils and strips so it is also known as a press working the sheet metal working it is also known as a press working because they are performed on a stamping press they are performed on this machines that are known as the stamping press why the stamping because the product uh, of the sheet metal working is called a stamping so let's suppose this is a sheet metal working operation so this product which will achieve an angle iron you can say that will be called as a stamping that will be classified as a stamping or in, in this case we will have a uh, drawn cup like shape so that will also be classified as the stamping material right okay so uh, the sheet metal working that is also known as a press working why they are called as a press working because they are performed on the stamping presses and the stamping word comes from because the we call the product of the sheet metal working as a stamping it is mostly performs a cold working uh, uh, we are actually increasing the strength of the material and also changing the time uh, changing the geometry uh, up to some extent right uh, then uh, it is performed on a machine which have two main parts the first the positive part that is known as a punch uh, this is a similar mechanism like in the case of the forging if you remember we have the punch and die so in that case we call both the dies okay so we have the movable part the positive part that is known as a punch and the negative part which has an impression in it that is known as the die so the cutting operation uh, or the forming operation the sheet metal operation are performed on thin sheets how much thin the sheet metal is classified that uh, it ranges in thickness from 0.44 millimeter to 6 millimeter if we have beyond if we have, if we have thickness beyond 6 millimeter that won't be called as a sheet metal rather it will be classified as the plate so in with such plates we will perform rolling operation to reduce its thickness and to get the sheets right so uh, we have discussed uh, different types of sheet metal in chapter 18 so in chapter 18 we have discussed that uh, the sheet metal has four major operations we have the sheet metal cutting we have the sheet metal bending we have the drawing right so let's start with this one so in the chapter number 18 we have discussed some different types of sheet metal working process so in this chapter we will be discussing each of them in details so let's start with this one uh, the sheet metal processes are classified into three main categories the first one is called as a sheet metal cutting then we have the sheet metal bending and the sheet metal drawing uh, this name is similar to one of the process in the bulk deformation that was a wire in the bar drawing so to uh, differentiate it with the wire in the bar drawing we also call it to be 
deep drawing right it is also called as a deep drawing and we will also discuss some miscellaneous press working operation some specialized one so let's start with the sheet metal cutting so um, as i said in the beginning uh, we will again and again referring to this chart because it helps us to organize our subject and help us to remember the uh, the connection between the different processes but different manufacturing processes so if we see here uh, we have uh, we begin with the shaping processes and in the shaping processes we discuss shaping by melting the material and we discuss all those categories then we jump towards the deformation then in chapter number 19 we discuss uh, bulk deformation process that was a rolling forging extrusion and the wire and the bar drawing then we move towards uh, we, are, we are moving towards another type of bulk def deformation process that is known as the sheet metal working and in this chapter we are going to discuss bending deep drawing shearing process and some miscellaneous processes so what is the sheet metal cutting so sheet metal cutting uh, it's a cutting of metal or the shearing of metal you can say uh, using the two sharp cutting edges right we are uh, we have a sheet with certain thickness obviously less than six millimeter and that is being that it is being shared using the two sharp cutting edges this one and this one so how does it occur um, the punch the die is the negative part or the stationary part so the punch comes in contact with the plate and it presses it cause some depression in the material and soon after this depression it keeps on applying the pressure so there's certain penetration into the material you can see the depth it has penetrated into the material and uh, because of the pressure by the punch and the reactionary pressure or reactionary uh, reaction by the die there is an initiation of the fracture the fracture initiate within the material so ultimately we have the uh, sheet shared by the two sharp cutting edges of punch and die so once we have the shared edge there are different regions within the shared edges if we see here uh, this is a sheet which has been shared using the sheet metal cutting or the punch and die so it has certain region the first one this region that is called as a rollover region it is classified as a rollover region right and it is uh, caused by the initial depression as we have discussed in the last slide the initial depression caused by the punch uh, in the beginning just as it comes in contact with the material as you can see the initial depression here so soon after that it starts to penetrate into the material so there's a penetration that is the uh, the plastic deformation penetration of the punch into the work before the fracture begin so here the actual plastic deformation takes place in this region actual plastic deformation takes place so uh, soon after this region we have a relatively rough surface uh, because of the rapid breaking of bonds between the atoms of the material so we have the sharp edges in this region so this is known as a fractured zone when the crack which has been created using the punch and die initiates on its own because of the pressure and at the last in, in the last we have a sharp edge uh, that is because the elongation of the metal during final separation of two piece so uh, you must have observed when you separate a uh, two met metals uh, or the, even the uh, you can take the example of a bubble gum when you separate the, or tore the bubble gum into two pieces you observe some uh, burrs or the elongations on on the edges so this uh, uh, principle also occurs in the case of metals so this one is a burr formation and it uh, it depends upon several parameters also and we will discuss that in the uh, lectures ahead so if we uh, see the sheet metal cutting the sheet metal cutting has three different uh, subtypes the first one is called the sheet metal shearing and then we have the sheet metal blanking and the uh, punching so the sheet metal is of three types it has cutting bending and the 
deep drawing and the sheet metal cutting has further classification of these uh, these three classification the sheet metal cutting has further these classification so we'll discuss uh, each of them uh, one by one so what is the sheet metal shearing uh, we have discussed uh, in the basic schematic it means cutting uh, material into two pieces sharing simply the cutting the material into two pieces right so it is cutting along a straight line between the two sharp cutting edges right we have the if you draw the punch in the 3d this is like the punching and this is our sheet and this is the die right so this whole sharp cutting edge of the punch is being cut by the sharp cutting edge of the die right so the machine used in the shearing operation is also called as a power shear or the squaring shear so the machine that has a punch and die in it it is known as the power shearing machine or the squaring shearing machine so upper blade is often inclined and this upper blade as you can see it is often inclined so let's suppose this is our sheet so the blade will comes in contact at a single edge so this edge will come in contact with the plate uh, why is that so to reduce the cutting force how and what does it mean because uh, the contact area uh, between the punch and the plate has been reduced by creating the sharp inclined edge if it was straight so we have the whole uh, if you see this this whole surface would have come in contact with the whole surface of the plate so it would have reduced uh, it would have increased the force required to perform the cutting operation so what we do we inclined to reduce the required cutting force so there's some inclination here like this one so it is typically used to cut the large sheet of uh, this is a very basic operation of the sheet metal when we have received the sheets from the rolling operation we perform the sheet metal shearing to cut into subsequent smaller sheets for performing further operations then there comes a sheet metal blanking and the punching the other two types of the uh, cutting operation so what is the blanking blanking is a sheet metal cutting to separate piece called a blank from surrounding stock while the punching is inverse it is similar to blanking except the cut piece is scrap called a slug called a slug so what does it mean we have a, a sheet here right and if uh, i require a piece of such and such dimension dimension a and to b to be cut out as my product that a piece of a metal of such and such dimension should be cut out and as my product right if this is my product and the remaining hollow this hollow metal with the hollow this is a scrap it's of no use then such operation is called as a blanking when this is my product and this is the scrap the remaining one is a scrap then this is called a blanking and when what i desire is to make a hole either circular or the square or remove some material from the edges if this is my desired let's suppose i have a sheet stock and my purpose is to create a hole at a distance of 10 mm from here and 10 mm from here and i have to create a hole of 1 and 1 1 mm diameter this is my desired so it it means this is the punching operation this will call as a punching operation so the remaining the metal that has been cut out this is the scrap and this is the product right so this is called a punching operation right so they both are uh, opposite of each other so the scrap is called as a slug right here you can see that this is slug our purpose was to poke a hole in it and in this in this case our purpose was to get a piece of a metal out of this sheet stock so this is a scrap in the blanking and this is my product the blank in the punching this is the scrap that i have cut out and the other one the material with the hole poked in it this is the uh, product so this is the diff basic difference between the blanking and the punching operation so uh, as you seen uh, in the previous figure that there is some space between the material between the punch and die as you can see here there is some 
space between the punch and die right so there's some space that's called a clearance so the clearance also plays a vital role in performing the cutting operation so distance between the punch and punching cutting edge and the die cutting edge that's called as a clearance the distance between the punch and cutting a punch cutting edge and the die cutting edge that is termed as a clearance. So clearance values uh, typically ranges from four to eight percent of the stock thickness. Let's suppose if my stock thickness is let's suppose uh, four millimeter. So the clearance between the punch and die, this clearance should be in the range of zero point zero four into four two. 0 0.08 into 4 so it should range in between this this value so the clearance range between 4 to 8 percent of the stock thickness so what will happen if we uh, exceed uh, beyond this range if it is too small that is less than uh, 4 percent the fractal line pass each other causing double burnishing and the larger force so what will happen if you see here if we have a small clearance between the work part and the die cavity uh, between the punch and the die so what will happen there's a pressure being exerted by the punch and the reaction in pressure by the uh, die so they both will oppose each other the pressure and the reaction will be opposing each other because of the very slow small amount of clearance so in that case not only the punch will be creating the burnishing zone if you remember what the burnishing zone was let us uh, have a review what was the burnishing zone this burnishing zone where the actual plastic deformation takes place where actual penetration or the cutting takes place so because of this very low clearance there will be a burnishing created by the punch and there will be burnishing created by the die as well because of this reaction force that are colliding with each other so due to that we have uh, have to have a larger force to perform the cutting operation and obviously it will affect the life of the punch and the die but if we have a very large clearance that is more than 8% uh, there will be uh, too much burst created here uh, between the cutting edges it will uh, waste a lot of material and uh, there will be a lot of burrs and a smooth surface so that is why we have to uh, keep the clearance in the optimum range of 4 to 8 percent of the stock thickness so if you move towards the uh, analysis of the sheet metal cutting operation if you, you can see here in this diagram that uh, we have a punch here and the die uh, the stock with certain thickness so the diameter of the this uh, punch here it calls d h equals to punch dia we have the d d that will be the die size diameter of the die then we have uh, we have the clearance c equals to now we have two types of operation either we are performing the blanking one or we are performing the punching operation so in the case of the blanking in the case of the blanking what is our desired part our desired part is the hole or the, uh, the piece that is cut out obviously in the blanking the piece that is cut out that is our product that is our desired part so we will base our calculation on that desired part because our ultimate objective is to get the part or the material cut out with the this and this diameter so we will base our calculation on that uh, piece so in this case the blanking die diameter for the blanking that will be called as a DB as we have called it here the part that is cut out because we desired this part and we have a clearance see the punch of in the case of blanking the punch diameter uh, 
the punch diameter would be the blank diameter minus this blank diameter minus 2c one clearance here and one clearance here so it will be blank diameter minus 2c two times of the clearance and same the case if we are performing the punching if you are performing the punching operation so what is our uh, requirement in the case of the punching our requirement is to poke a hole in this of a certain dimension so uh, we are basing our calculation based on the hole that is to be created in the metal stock so in this case uh, the hole punch diameter that will be dh right this amount of hole this uh, diameter of the hole should be punched here so this will be the diameter of the punch as well as the hole that is to be poked in it so the die diameter or the punch or the hole die diameter that is equals to the punch diameter this punch diameter plus 2c right? in this case we are adding the clearance this is the diameter if we are let's suppose if you get uh, comes across a problem uh, dealing with the blanking so we'll take the uh, customer said okay I want a hole uh, that is to be punch uh, that uh, that is to be uh, cut out I want a circular metal stock that's to be cut out of the sheet with a diameter of 10 millimeter I want a hole I want a rounded metal stock that is to be cut out of the sheet with the diameter of 10 millimeter so we'll okay uh, we will decide okay the die size should be 10 millimeter right the die size should be 10 millimeter the die size this one so uh, what should be the punch diameter for this case we will say okay the punch diameter should be 10 minus 2 times of the clearance and whatever the clearance will be it based it is it depends upon the material we are using and if the same customer says I want a hole of 10 millimeter to be poked in a, to be created in a metal stock so what we will say we will base our calculation based on this uh, hole that is to be punched right so and the office the hole is being created by the punch not the die the blank that is to be that is taken out of the part is created by the die right because die will allow how much material will pass but the hole that is to be cut uh, that is to be punched into the metal stock depends upon the punch the upper part so that is why in that case uh, we will say okay uh, the diameter of our hole is 10 millimeter so we will be using 10 millimeter of the punch and how much uh, space should we give we will say okay the space we should give here is diameter of the die that is a 10 millimeter plus 2c whatever the clearance is so this is how we can calculate the punch and the die diameter then there is a cutting force here uh, let me erase this one then you have the cutting force that is involved here that's equals to STL right where yeah, S is the shear strength of the material shear strength of the material and T is the stock thickness and L is the contact length yeah you can say length of cutting edge right so this is the cutting force for the shearing operation but if we are performing say let's say blanking and punching and slitting so what will be the length of the uh, cut edge the length of the cutter let's suppose we are uh, punching a hole so the length would be the parameter of the circle of the hole the parameter of the hole would be the length this cutting edge okay so uh, but 
what if we don't have the shear strength of the material we can take another formula let me write here So if you don't have the uh, shear strength, we have alternative estimating cutting force that is equals to F into equals to 0 0.7 into the tensile strength of that material into the stock thickness into the length so here T as is the tensile strength so that T is the stock thickness right uh, these equations these both equations are based under the assumption that the whole material is being cut at once what does it mean uh, let's suppose I'm drawing the side view this is my sheet and this is the uh, cutting edge this is the punch this is the sheet so this hole is in contact all at once But uh, that's not the case. Uh, if you want to reduce the cutting uh, force, what we do, we not only incline in this direction, there's two kind of inclination. The first inclination was, uh, if we revise the, yeah, this, uh, this one, the first inclination was this one. That not all the area, the face of the uh, punch is come in contact with the sheet, rather it is being uh, uh, in contact with the sheet at on the edge, right? but at the same time there is an inclination of edge also the edge is also not coming in contact with the sheet all at once rather it is coming in contact uh, progressively right the first come uh, in contact the, on one side it is coming in contact in, in the first then so on so forth it comes it keeps on penetrating the material so uh, we have two kinds of inclination the first inclination is this one that not all the face is, is in contact with the sheet metal rather it is only in contact with the cutting edge and on the same side on the same pattern the cutting edge itself is also in inclined position so that not all of the cutting edge is in contact with the sheet metal at all at once rather it is cutting come in contact with the sheet metal progressively one by uh, uh, as it is progressing that cutting is being progressed so uh, now we know the two kinds of cutting forces we have F equals to STL the shear strength into the stock thickness into the length or F equals to 0 0.7 into the tensile strength into the stock thickness into the cutting length length of the cutting edge and if you have this hole that is we punch or the blank that is we cut out the parameter of that hole or the parameter of whatever the profile we are cutting would be the cutting uh, edge length so let's uh, move towards an example for this uh, prop, this operation. It says a round disc of 150 millimeter is to be blanked from a strip of 3.2 millimeter thickness. Hard uh, half hard cold rolled steel whose shear strength is 310 megapascal and determine the appropriate punch and die diameter and the blanking force. So we have a sheet. We have a sheet. Of thickness, what is the 3.2 millimeter. So we have a sheet of thickness, 3.2 millimeter. 
it says a uh, round disk of 1 million meters to be blanked out so it wants to blank out a round disk of 150 millimeter that is to be blanked out and the uh, sheet is made of the hard cold rolled steel uh, with a shear strength of 350 3110 megapascal so we have the shear strength equals to 310 megapascals we have the top thickness equals to 3.2 uh, millimeter and we have the length that is equals to the perimeter of the this circular disc and that would be equals to pi into the diameter of the blank right so that would be equals to 150 into pi and that is equals to 471.2 millimeter. This is the parameter we have the stock thickness and then this one. Uh, it says determine the appropriate punch and die diameter. So we are performing the blanking operation. So the die of the of this blank is the die of our die. So the diameter of die opening is would be equals to 150 millimeter or this is to be blanked out and the punch diameter would be equals to db minus 2c so that is equal to 150 minus 2c now what is the c here uh, the formula for the clearance is equals to ACT where AC is the allowance for clearance it depends upon the material and T again is the stock thickness so we have the half hard cold rolled steel so we will take the value from this graph cold rolled steel cold rolled steel yeah this one we will take the value of allowance AC as 0 0.075 so the clearance would in this case would be 0 0.075 into 3.2 so that would be equals to 0 0.24 millimeter right so the punch diameter would be equals to 150 minus 2 into 0 0.24 so that is equals to 149.52 that is the diameter of the punch and that is the diameter of the die cavity now at the last uh, it's asking about the blanking force so we know the blanking force equals to STL we have the shear strength of 310 into the stock thickness of 3.2 and the cutting length would be the parameter of this hole and that is equals to 471.2 millimeter so the answer would be 4 Six seven four sixty nine newtons. This is the force that is to be exerted to perform this blanking operation. So that's all for this lecture. So in this lecture, we have discussed the first type of the sheet metal operation, that is the sheet metal cutting. And in that sheet metal cutting, we discussed the subsections, the subtypes of sheet metal cutting, that is the shearing, blanking, and the punching and the shearing simply the cutting of the sheet into uh, further pieces and blanking and punching are inverse of each other blanking is to something it is uh, blanking is something that to cut some part out of the sheet as our product and punching is to cut hole or any geometry into the sheet as our product so that's all for this lecture uh, if you have any question you may reach me at the google classroom or my email address assalamu alaikum